Who's up for a cooking collab? Well, hi, this is Gail. Welcome to my channel. I was invited to join this cooking collab. I want to thank Fairy on the Vlogs for doing that and can't wait. Smells great for putting this whole thing on. We are going to do some cabbage, baked sweet potatoes, and steak. Let's come along. Thanks for watching. Okay, so forget what I said about grilling. I just went outside and it is raining. So we're gonna cook this inside. That being said, I'm gonna show you everything that I would cook out except indoors. Let's keep watching. What I'm gonna do, I have a cabbage right here, which I am going to cut into wedges and put in this baking dish. I've already got the oven preheated. That's on 350. So our recipe or menu tonight is going to be steak, cabbage, and baked sweet potatoes. What I do to the cabbage is just cut it into wedges, making sure not to get the center core because that tastes bitter. And each wedge is going to get placed in the baking dish face up, just like that. I'm not going to show you the video of me cutting all of these because it's kind of obvious. I am going to turn these, though, and get the most that I can in the pan. Okay, so, so we have them all cut and put in here. One thing I didn't show you is I did grease this casserole dish just lightly with a little touch of olive oil. Now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to separate these just a little bit just to kind of help the flavor get down in there. You don't have to separate a whole lot. There you go. Just enough to kind of let the flavor permeate down there. All right. Now I'm going to add just a little dot of butter onto each piece of the cabbage. Again, just enough to kind of flavor each piece of cabbage. So, oops. That one fell down there, but that's okay. We're going to add some water in a few minutes, too. And then while you're baking, that will help steam the cabbage. Okay. Put that right on. Stay. All right. Now I have the butter on here. I'm going to sprinkle with a little bit of onion powder. I use the cheap stuff. little sprinkle there. I'm also going to add some of this roasted garlic sea salt. I have a tiny bit left. I got this from Red Stick and you can tell I'm going to have to order some more. We love this stuff. It's not sponsored. I just happen to love them. Okay. 
Because I don't have a lot of the roasted garlic salt, I'm going to add just a little touch of the store-bought cheap stuff again. Okay, so that should do it with the salt and the garlic and everything. Now I'm going to put the water in. Okay, I've got around a half cup here. Just eyeball it however much you think it needs to steam it some while it's cooking. And I have preheated the oven to 350 degrees. And this needs to cook for about 40 minutes. And that's going to be perfect because it's going to give us about the same amount of time to bake our sweet potatoes and get the steaks ready to go. So we're going to cover the baking dish with our lid and slide it into our preheated oven. Again, that's set at 350 and it'll go for 40 minutes. In the meantime, we'll get our baked sweet potatoes ready. So on the sweet potatoes, all I did was I've scrubbed them thoroughly under the running water and I'm going to trim the ends off. Then I'm going to rub oil on them, and that is all I am going to do. We will put a little bit of butter on them at the table. Now, you notice that I'm cooking extra. I'm not having company. I am planning leftovers for my husband to take to work tomorrow. Why heat up the kitchen if you don't have to, right? So I'm going to put just a little bit of olive oil in my hand, and then I'm going to rub it on the potato taking good care to get the ends of the potatoes with a little bit of oil, oil on them. My hands still feel oily. And this is going to kind of get the skin ready, maybe make it a little bit firmer. Oh, needs more oil. Crisp it up a little bit while it cooks. Again, making sure to get the ends really well. Got them all. Okay. I got these came from the Misfits Market box that I just love, but these are items that they can't always sell at the grocery store because of sizes, and you can see the difference there. I still love the box though. It has been a tremendous value and a huge help. Not as many trips to the grocery store anymore. All right, so we're going to slide this in next to the cabbage. I still have. 37 minutes to go. Now let's get the steaks ready. We're limited in our selection at the store. I wanted to do hamburgers, but there was no ground beef. Um, there was this package of steaks and some others that were more expensive. But they're huge. Look at that. One person doesn't need to eat this whole steak, so I am cutting it in half. And we'll be bagging the rest of the steak up for other meals that's in this package. I actually have a grinder coming from KitchenAid for my KitchenAid stand mixer. And that will help me make my own hamburger. So the next time I go to the store, if once again all I have is steak and a couple of roasts, then I'm going to be able to still make my own hamburger. This has got a large fat content to it, so I am going to trim this off. Before I do anything else to it, I'm going to have it wait about 30 minutes to bring it up to room temperature. That makes the flavor of the steak a little bit better. It tends to make it a little more tender and so on. Actually, one thing I will do is I will season the steak first. I actually meant to say that. So now that we have these steaks cut, let me get the seasoning and wait till you see what I'm going to use. Okay. Well, I have the seasoning and looky here. What else am I going to use? 
Uncle Steve's shake. This first came to my attention when we did a fundraiser back in November, the Black Friday charity fundraiser for the church of Valerie Reese. And I have used it and loved it ever since. So, set that side. I want to sprinkle it on both sides, kind of liberally there. Okay, we're going to let it be sit here about 30 minutes and let the flavors all mix and get into the meat and let it warm up to room temperature because it cooks better that way. And the flavor's better. So we're just going to let this sit and I will be back shortly. Because I don't like heating my oven up for just one or two items, I'm going to make some jalapeno poppers. Now, we may have one or two of these tonight, but the reason I'm making them is so my husband can take them to work for lunch one day. I can put like three jalapeno poppers in a container with some rice and or some beans, and he can zap it in the microwave, thaw them out, and have a decent lunch. The thing about jalapenos is that the heat is in the seeds and the white part. So in order to get the heat out, you want to get every little scrap of the white part. And I cannot think of the name for it. Anyway, you see me scraping it out and I'm cutting them in half and scraping them out some more. If I was doing this over a campfire, if I was out in my camper van or a travel, travel trailer and I was cooking outside and it wasn't raining, I would put these in foil packets. I would do them individually. Um, just simply take the piece of foil, lightly coat it in a little bit of oil just so they don't stick. Uh, go ahead and stuff them as you're going to see me stuff them in a minute and put them over the fire. They should cook in just a few minutes. Now, if you're gonna do it that way, it does help to pre-cook the hamburger ahead of time. Just actually, I'm gonna do that regardless. The cooking ahead of time helps make sure that everything gets done and then just put the cheese in at the last second. Well, you'll see, it's, it's the same way I do it here. Um, on the cabbage that I just cooked, I would do the same thing. Uh, I would season the cabbage just as you saw it seasoned. And again, with those, I would use a piece of foil, lightly oil it so the cabbage doesn't stick, and wrap that cabbage in the aluminum foil, uh, cook it, a few minutes on each side just so you can get it done. I would say uh, I think I usually cook it like 10 minutes on each side but you are going to want to flip it over. That's the only adjustment that I would make um, to any of this as far as cooking outside for a cookout. Uh, I really hate that it's raining but you know can't control the rain but these are things that are easy to do either indoors or outdoors. Now, as far as cooking the jalapeno poppers, if you're outside and you're over a grill and all of your ingredients are already pre-cooked, then all you have to do is cook them just for a few minutes. Um, five minutes probably is going to be enough. All you need to do is melt the cheese. Everything else is already cooked. So you still want to make sure you scrape them out real good uh, to take care of the heat, unless your family really likes it hot. And then pre-cook the meat. Um, one little hint about pre-cooking the meat, if you're only going to be out there a day or two, you can actually pre-cook the meat at home. When you get to, go ahead and freeze it. Then when you get to the campground, what you're going to want to do is just put it in your skillet for a minute or two to thaw it out. And you're good to go. It's a lot faster and makes life a little easier once you get to the campsite. It's a little bit more work on the front end, but a lot faster on the cooking end. 
So that's one of the tips that I like to do. The other thing, if you can't do that, do go ahead and do all this prep work ahead of time. Uh, for the cabbage, you want to go ahead and cut it into wedges ahead of time, kind of break it apart. You can even put it in a foil ahead of time. Then when you get there, just carefully unwrap the foil and put the same seasonings in and then wrap that foil up real tight again. Again, it's a little bit more work before you leave home, but it makes things easier when you go camping. And the reason I like to do that is because when I get to the campsite, I really just want to relax. I want to enjoy the campfire. I want to look at the stars. I don't want to have to do a lot of food prep, and I don't want to have to do a lot of extra cooking. It's a matter of preference. Okay, my oven just went off, so let me take care of this. I'm going to pause the camera and be right back in a minute. point in the video editing process that I find out I forgot to come back and turn on the camcorder for a few minutes. So briefly, what I did to the jalapeno poppers is I cooked the hamburger meat as usual and sprinkled it with chili powder. Then I mixed in Monterey Jack and white cheese. They have, and a cheddar cheese. They have this Mexican blend at the grocery store. So I used that this time and put it together with a hamburger meat. Then I took all that, stuffed it into the jalapeno pepper, wrapped it all in a slice of bacon. Now I've been doing it for a while, so I was able to wrap the bacon pretty tightly, but sometimes you will need a toothpick. Uh, then put that all in the oven on a lightly greased cooking sheet. The camcorder picks up at me telling you how I cooked them. So here we go. The baked potatoes cooked for 40 minutes. Then I turned up the oven and slid these in and cooked, finished cooking the potatoes and the cabbage at 400 as well as the jalapeno poppers. And hubby is cooking the steak on three minutes each side. About that, yeah. Okay. While the steaks are cooking, I'm going to go ahead and fill you in. We're using a large cast iron skillet that's been well preheated. That gives a more even temperature absorption, which seems to make a more even sear on each side of the steak. The steaks are about an inch thick, so three minutes on each side gives us a really good sear. And, uh oh, these are trying to stick a little bit. Okay. I did not oil this pan enough, so they're sticking. I'm going to give you a close-up here when I get them onto the plate. Wait just a second. Usually you just need to lightly oil it. Now I'm wondering what I did, because usually these just slide right off. Okay, that one's easier. Let me get this photo for you so you can see it. Don't those look delicious? We're going to try one with dinner, but most of them, like I said, are going to go to hubby's lunch. You can get a few meals out of those, and it makes my life easier. I'm just going to put rice in them, and then we'll freeze them, and he'll have some decent meals. I really like cooking more than one thing at a time. Uh, if I'm going to heat up the oven especially because it's just a little easier on the heat bill and a little easier on my stress level later. I don't have to worry so much about cooking for lunches for work. Of course, if we're camping, it's not really possible. Need a plate? There you go. Okay, they've been on it three minutes on each side. Check our internal temperature. Aiming for 166. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, it's a little bit higher. So we'll go ahead and pull those. Well, one forty by the top of the Yeah. We have our baked cabbage right here. Our sweet potatoes are right over there. Am I getting it? Yes. Our jalapeno poppers. And I cut cucumber. I figured you knew what cucumber cutting would be like. Just slice it, wash it first. And we have the steaks. Now we have the taste tester. Yay! Which you want to start with first? I'll try. I'll try one of the jalapeno poppers. Okay. Thank you. I'm sure you're pretty good on the baked potato. Let me give you a little bite of the cabbage too. So start small. Is that all I get? No, you'll get more okay. if you like it. I just haven't fixed it in a while and want to make sure you like it before I give you a lot. Right. Let's see what we got here. Otherwise, I'll have to warm up green bean. Ooh. That's good. All right. That's real good. You want to try your steak? I like that. I don't know. <laughs> and for the steak seasoning, guess what I use? I haven't tasted it. I don't know. But I imagine you use... Shake. Hmm? Gator Shake is the seasoned salt. Oh, yeah. Use. Awesome. Hmm. Ooh, poppers are good. Good. I have to confess, I already had a popper. It just wasn't on the video. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. But it was good. <coughs> Excuse me. I also taste tested the cucumber just to make sure it was good. <coughs> Excuse me. And mowing the yard, so it is not coronavirus. No, it is allergy. It yes. is yard mowing. All right, let's try the steak. We're gonna put this on my page. Mm. Okay, well, thank you all for watching. Always hashtag be bodacious. Don't forget to check out the other videos that are part of this great collab. I am linking them all again right here. So don't forget to go and check them out. Lots of great channels, super recipes, dynamite personalities. Don't miss them. These are going to air on May the 19th with all of the cooking collab videos. And again, a big thanks to Fariana for inviting me originally and to Robin at Can't Wait Smells Great for putting this all together. Thank you for watching it and sharing it on Facebook and Instagram with your friends. And I will see you on the next video. Don't let life get in the way of living. Bye. Bye. Let's eat.